recording? Looks like we are. Let's minimize this. Let's talk about some probability. Probability, the rabbit hole goes extremely deep, but I'm going to try and prevent you from falling too far into it. We're just going to talk about some very basics of probability. It won't seem like the basics because it's two full lectures, but it really is just the basics. Uh, let's see. Why do we need to know this? Because of inference. Because probability, as we've seen in the first week, we're always talking about probabilities. We want to know that p-value. We're going to calculate power, statistical power. That's a probability. Alpha is a, is a statistical probability. Uh, these are big deals to us. We want to know the probabilities of certain events happening. We want to know the likelihood of, of observing our data or greater if the null hypothesis is true, etc. So you need to understand a little bit of the background of probability of how we use these tools. So anyway, here's an example of the kind of inference we would use. Let's say you collect the, the IQ, you measure the IQ of 56 children who are living near some toxic waste, and you find that the mean, I used an M here because I hadn't figured out how to do X bar. Actually, you couldn't really do it before. Uh, the past couple of years in Excel. The mean is 97.3 IQ. That's slightly lower than average. Average mean is 100. So is the toxic waste affecting their IQ? So how can we come to any conclusion? At this point, you should have a pretty good idea that we can formulate the null on the alternative hypotheses and calculate the probability of observing a mean that low or lower than the national average um, if the null hypothesis is not true. So the expected mean of these children is 100. So this is what the distribution should look like. And in fact, IQ makes a relatively normal distribution, pretty close to normal. So we can pretend like it's normal and use the normal approximation. And we can just figure out probabilities associated with things. And so we can figure out a, a fairly precise p-value for this. So here's their IQ of 97.3. Now that IQ, that number is down there because we're not only looking at the distribution of all possible IQs, because then uh, if we were in that distribution, the IQ of 97.3 would be very, very close to the middle of the distribution. But it spreads out because we're looking at the distribution of all possible mean IQs that would come from all possible random samples of 56 children from the general population that on average didn't have any, any unusual problems. So in that distribution, what's the probability of getting a mean from this group of 56? Like, of getting a mean of 56 children that is 97.3 or lower, well, it's that probability. It's the area under the curve from there on out, which turns out to be 0.09 more or less. So there's a little bit less than a 9% chance of that happening. That gives us a much better uh, idea of how to proceed and answer the question of whether the toxic waste might actually be affecting the children. P is 0.09. Now, you know that's not below the cutoff of 0.05 that a lot of people use in, in science and the behavioral sciences, but it's also not 0.5 or 0.8. It's low enough to be of concern. So this is how we use probability with inference, as you've already kind of seen. And you don't have to understand the details of this right now. This is just me explaining to you why we need to know probability. So probability is always based in kind of its molecular state, like the little teeny bits that probability is made up of are teeny individual probabilities. And those individual probabilities boil down to some kind of a process, usually a random process, that can have multiple outcomes. So imagine that this random process is the event, a process and event are fairly synonymous, the event of rolling one six-sided die one time. There are six things that could happen. But in probabilities, we're not interested in all the things that could happen, except because it leads us to figuring out how likely it is that one of those things, or two or three, anyway, some, some su subset of them might happen. So if we're interested in this particular thing, rolling a three, then this is our, our situation. We're interested in this probability among, or this outcome, among all the other possible outcomes. So you've got a process or an event, that's the little star there, and then you've got the, the, sorry, the potential outcomes of that process or event. So briefly, we should mention the sample space, which the book uh, discusses to a certain extent. That's just the set of all possible outcomes. So back here, the sample space is just one, two, three, four, five, six. So if, if, if we write it out the way mathematicians sometimes do, we use little brackets. So if you roll one six-sided die, here's the sample space. You just, put, you just list all the possibilities. And it's not always numbers. Um, let's say there's a raffle with only one possible prize. The sample space is 
like winning or not winning. You'd have to come up with some phrase to describe the two things that can happen. You can win or you can not win. If there were three prizes, then you'd have win, prize one, prize two, prize three, and then you'd need not winning. So here's another example. So wishing you were a little bit taller, that you were a baller, etc. So the list of all possible things um, in, a, in, a particular, in a particular domain is a sample space. It's a, all the possible things that might happen under certain conditions, the results of a particular event. So in a nutshell, here's what probability is. Probability is from a random process, a random event, the outcomes that we are interested in for the particular problem at hand, which might be good outcomes, bad outcomes, whatever. Anyway, the ones we're interested in, divided by all of the possible things that could happen from that process, from that event. So that's a part divided by a whole, which is a proportion. So the number is always going to be positive and between 0 and 1. It could reach 1 or it could reach 0, but it can't go negative and it can't go greater than 1 unless the calculations were messed up. And so keep in mind that part divided by whole, the whole part includes the part. A proportion is made up that way. It's not part divided by everything else. It's part divided by the whole, including the part that's in the top, that's in the numerator there. The numerator in, is included in the denominator to make a proportion. So having this simple definition, we can look at some very simple probabilities. What's the probability of pulling the ace of spades from a deck in one pull? You can probably figure this out. But instead of going intuitively with your gut, why don't you try and work it into uh, outcomes of interest versus all possible outcomes? And I'll go on. You can pause at any time and test yourself. So all possible outcomes, you could pull any one of 52 cards. It's only one, one pull, one draw of a card. So you could pull these. Now I abbreviated 1S as ace of spades, two of spades, three of spades, etc. Hearts, clubs, diamonds. So these are all the 52 possible outcomes, as long as I remember to list them all. The outcomes of interest, there's only one. It's ace of spades. Oh, I should have put 1S instead of AS. So ace of spades. So the probability of that happening is 1 divided by 52. So the outcomes of interest divided by all possible outcomes, which turns out to be 0.02. More or less, it's rounded. So what's the probability of getting heads on one toss of a coin? Now you know this, but let's just show how it works out from a classical probability point of view. All the possible outcomes, the sample space is this. You can get heads or you can get tails. Those are the only two things that can happen that are uh, worth noticing here. There's only two possible ways that can turn out. The outcomes of interest, there's only one of them, heads, because I formulated the question to include only heads. So the probability is 1 divided by 2, which is 0.5. Now you notice we don't put a 0 0.5 very often. It's not that you can't. You can put a 0 0.5 if you want. But because proportions can only go between 0 and 1, they can never go above 1. As long as you know you're talking about probabilities, you don't actually need to put the trailing or the, the preceding 0 there. So what's the probability of randomly choosing the name of a female out of a hat? And if that hat includes slips of paper with all the names of all the students in this class. So um, actually the, waiting, the, the list might have changed, but a couple of weeks ago it was 53 students on the rosters between my two sections, 40 females and 13 males. So these are all possible outcomes. Now I could list everybody's names, but I really didn't want to. It's a privacy issue. I didn't want to list female, 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 female. Maybe I should have done that. Anyway, I'm just abbreviating. There are 50, 53 things in the sample space. But 40 of them are of interest, just the 40 females. So the probability is number of things of interest, 40, divided by the number of possible things that could happen, 53. So that turns out to be around 0.75. Here's another one. What's the probability of drawing the shortest of four matchsticks? Pretty easy. All the possible outcomes, there's just one shortest matchstick, so I just wrote the other ones as other, other, other. And the outcomes of interest, there's only one. It's the shortest one, so the probability is 1 in 4, 1 out of 4, 1 divided by 4. Those are all the same thing. It's 0.25. So sometimes things get slightly tricky. What's the probability of not picking a red face card in one draw of one card from a standard 52-card deck of card, 52 card deck? So all the possible outcomes are here. So... Actually, it's got some odd formatting. Anyway, you can see them all there. The outcomes of interest are these. All the, prob all the possibilities, you've got these, but you don't want the Jack of Hearts, Queen of Hearts, King of Hearts, or the Jack of Diamonds, Queen of Diamonds, King of Diamonds. 
So those are the three things you don't want in each suit, two suits. So there are six cards you don't want that you're not interested. So the outcomes interest them, or 46 potential outcomes of interest. And so 46 divided by 52 is 0.88. So the notes that you should uh, kind of keep in mind as we go along, number one, there's almost always more than one way to work out a problem. The previous problem had several approaches you could have taken, and you can get the right answer in multiple ways. And the next thing I can't stress enough, conceptualizing the problem, problem, getting it set up is the hardest and the most important part. Don't start calculating. Don't whip out your calculator or start doing math until you're pretty sure you've got the problem conceptualized correctly, because that's the hard part. That's the work. Uh, and it gets pretty difficult sometimes. And we always express probabilities in decimals. In this class, that's what I'd prefer. They can be expressed as fractions or odds, etc. but please don't do that. Just makes grading easier, makes it easier for us to all talk to each other. If you end up with a fraction, just punch it into your calculator and figure out what the decimal is. Usually it's sufficient to round it off to two decimal places unless there's like a bunch of nines or a bunch of zeros or something. Then take it down to where you can see something that's not a nine or not a zero. Uh, otherwise, most probabilities, you can just round them off to two decimal places and that's fine. So what does probability actually mean? And this is an important issue. There are different perspectives on the meaning of probability, on how to interpret what a probability is. If I say the probability is 0.25, what, do I, what am I saying? It's very abstract. It's an abstract mathematical thing that we put into common language all the time, and we need to think about what it means sometimes. The most common interpretation is something like this, that probability is the proportion of times that an event like we said, a, a random event, random process, that an event would turn out a certain way, and those are the outcomes of interest, if the event were repeated an infinite number of times. So the interpretation is, if we did this an infinite number of times, probability is the proportion of times. Remember, proportion is like a percent. So 0.5 means 50%. It's the proportion of times that we would get the result we're interested in, if we were to repeat the event an infinite number of times. And this is sometimes called the frequentist or the classical probability interpretation. Um, and keep in mind that we're often looking at combinations, complex combinations of multiple events, and we want to figure out what the probability of some combination of them is, not just a single event. And finally, this interpretation is a little weird because it implies that we could do things an infinite number of times in exactly the same way, which is really strange. Number one, you can't do things in infinitely because you'd never get done because time is infinite end of time, etc. So it's kind of like, some people say, in, in all the infinite alternate universes, what is the probability? Or what proportion of times would it turn out this way? So it gets very strange talking about probability. It's going to get uh, sort of mind twisty. Don't get caught up too much in it. Try and understand the basics. We're going to learn some basic rules of probability. Try and get those, be able to apply them, be able to solve the problems that I show you that are required problems. And that's about all you'll need for this class.